on my Lutron homeworks project, I prefer to use Future Automation panels who offer a wide range of cost-effective Lutron enclosures of different sizes that can host up to 18 modules. Whereas the Lutron branded ones only go up to 8 or 9 modules max per panel. I usually use this pre-wired enclosure with RCBOs. But look what we can purchase when we click on the LCP configuration button here. First, you need to be a professional and have an account with Future Automation to have access to some of the options and prices here. So, let's work out this LCP configuration page. First, for what we want to do here today, in the finish level, drop that list, let's select Site Ready. Then, on module wiring here, the first customer supplied option means that we will have to send all of our Lutron equipment to Future Automation so they can fully wire the whole panel and ship it to site. But now, if you select Ghost Wired, <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> That means that all the internal wiring will be done by Feature Automation, ready for us this time to install our Lutron equipment inside. And that's what we're going to see in detail in this tutorial. On this project, I need to use a LCP5 with 5 gene rails. Next, I can specify the type of module I plan to install for each position. Here, I'll have a Lutron phase adaptive dimming module the LQSE 4A5. And automatically, GeneRail Connect blocks have been added here. Then, on the second position, I'll also add another phase adaptive module. Actually, in this particular project here today, I'll have five of them in total. The empty positions here are for future use, as other areas may be added to the Lutron system at a later date, or not. <laughs> at least, I'll have spare room in my panel. I can also add a trim plate here as I just have a single module on that rail. And the blanking plate to fully cover the empty rail at the bottom of the panel. Next, I can make sure to specify a Homeworks QSX processor with two links here, the HQP7-2. And I also got my power supply. So I guess we are now good to order this ghost wired Lutron panel with RCBOs from Future Automation. And there it is, exactly as I've specified it on the LCP configurator. Complete with trim and blanking plates already in place. That's a good start. Future Automation Lutron panels always include the door and I always love that, which is very easy to remove. Now, let's remove the front cover to access the inside of the panel. Okay. Wow, looking good! So when you order a pre-wired Future Automation panel with RCBOs, they pre-wire the main feed from those 10 amp Type-C breakers to each module position. But on the Ghost Wired version, they pre-wire everything and position the cables exactly where they need to be, ready on DIN-rail connectors for the exact type of Lutron module specified in the LCP configurator. We have the module power wire connections in place, as well as all the modules output live and neutral pre-wire back to their respective connector block where each lighting circuit will be connected to. We also have the Lutron communication cable ready between the modules, back to the Lutron processor position using wire landing boards and cables to power the processor and its power supply are also already in place. Perfect. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by Adelux. Yes, that's right. This is us. Based in the UK, we've got over 16 years of experience with Lutron lighting control all over the world. We are specialized in high-end residential, where we design, supply, and program Lutron systems such as Lutron Homeworks, Lutron Ratu Select, and Lutron Blinds and Curtains. We work directly with end-users. 
but also with architects and lighting designers, electrical contractors, and smart home heavy specialists. So, if you too want to take your current lighting control project to the next level and be looked after by a reputable Lutron professional, feel free to get in touch with us now. Contact details in the comment section below. Okay, let's go back to our tutorial. I have five Lutron phase adaptive modules to install in that future automation panel. And as you can see, the pre-wire cable positions match exactly where the cables need to go on the Lutron module. <laughs> That's so clever. Okay, so I'm going to show you the exact details on how to install and wire the Lutron modules in a minute. I just thought I quickly do module number one and number two first. <laughs> I start by removing those gin rail end stops, which keep the connectors nicely in their correct position. Then I need to remove those neutral and live cables here. Those cables are providing continuity for the mains coming from the breakers to the Lutron module position and then to the module output connectors in case you decide to install this pre-wired panel to site as it is first to feed the lighting circuits directly from the breakers before installing the modules. This is not the case here today, so I must remove them as I need the mains to go through my dimming modules to control each circuit independently. There we go. Now, let's release those cables first from their respective connectors so I can remove them to install my Lutron module instead. Here, I use a bit of tape to keep the order of the four module output cables as they match the order to which they wire back to the connectors where the lighting circuit will be landing on the right hand side of the panel. Next, I release the Lutron communication cable with the connector that will have to go on the Lutron module. Now, I fit my Lutron module in place and secure it on the gin rail. Good. Actually, let's fast forward here and move on to the next dimmer for a closer look on the wiring of the cables on the Lutron module itself. There we go. Okay, so I wire the ground. Then I wire the live coming from the breaker to power on the module. I wire the neutral also coming from the breaker. And the second blue cable here is the same neutral that goes back to the gin rail terminal blocks that will feed the lighting circuits. Next, I carefully remove my cable number one from the tape I used earlier and wire it onto module output one. Same thing for cable number two. Number three. And number four. Okay, and I'm done with the mains power wiring on that module. That was super easy. Now, I just need to remove the communication connector here and plug the one that came ready with that pre-wired future automation panel. And as you can see, 
Pin number two on the connector is not wired, which is how it should be between the Lutron modules. Great. And now I fit my last Lutron module number five exactly in the same way as all the others. Ok, so now let's install the Lutron power supply for the Homos processor. These are the cables that will supply the 24 volt to the processor and its two links. And this is the connector for the mains feed to the power supply. Same thing here, I remove first the gin rail and stops. I release the pre-wire cables to be able to remove the gin rail connectors so I can install the Lutron power supply. Ok next, I remove the mains feed-in cable from the unit as I'm going to use the panel's pre-wire cable coming from the breaker to feed the power supply. I'll wire the neutral and then the live. Very good. I will also remove those 24 volt cables as I'm going to use that cable here that has already been pre-wired in that panel going directly to the Lutron processor location. That is very convenient. Next, let's install the Lutron Homeware QSX processor. The cable for the 24 volt will be plugged here. Then, link 1 and link 2, where all the other Lutron devices will be connected to. The homeware processor comes with this small piece of gin rail here that I will have to mount on the future automation panel. I guess we no longer have to do this, as the newer future automation panels now come with a gin rail as long as we specify the homeware QSX in the LCP configurator. Ok, now let's plug the 24 volt on the processor. All the Lutron dimming modules are wired on that cable here on that wire landing board. And I'm going to link it to the processor link number 1 using the supplied cable here. Very good. On the processor link 2 here, I'll connect the Lutron keypads once on site. Et voilà, I finished wiring my Lutron panel. That was quite easy. I always leave this Vago bypass connector here on all my modules, as it can be used to feed the lighting circuits directly to test or troubleshoot them once on site. Last thing, I'm going to double check my wiring before I deliver the panel to site, just to make sure each module output matches exactly the corresponding panel outputs on those connector blocks here, where my lighting circuits will be connected to. The blocks on the left match the Lutron module on the left of the gin rail, and the block on the right, the module on the right. And I'll do this test for all the modules. Next, I'm going to feed the panel and flip the brackets on to double check that everything powers correctly. I turn on the processor. Ok, good. Looks like it's booting up nicely. Then, I'll power module number 1, module 2, module 3. Very good. And module 4 and 5. All good, great. That's it, I finished wiring my panel. <laughs> Looks good, doesn't it? I'll put the cover back on and then the door and it's ready to go at the back of the truck and be taken to site. 
I found those ghost wired Fujio automation panels to be a very good option for Luchon dealer like myself. All the internal wiring has been beautifully completed and tested by a well-known and reputable company. Using those ghost wired panels for a while, I felt more in control in my panel building process. I even uploaded my homeworks database to the processor and addressed all my Lutron modules before delivering the panel to site, which saved a bit of time and allowed me to double check that I had good communication between the modules. I also like to label the Lutron modules, as you can see here, on a different panel I've done recently. And I like to customize it a little bit by adding this Ethernet port here that allows me to connect my laptop to the processor without opening the panel if I need a wired connection to it and don't want to go through the house network during the commissioning phase or for maintenance. Voila, there you have it. How to wire a Lutron homework system using Future Automation Ghost Wired Panels. I hope you find this video useful and if you have any question on the wiring of Lutron modules using Future Automation Panel, please let me know in the comment section below. And next, if you want to know how I design a full Lutron homework system, you can watch this video here. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much, good luck and talk to you again on the next tutorial.